So you bought your kid an iPhone or an iPad, and now you're looking to set up some parental controls on it. Well, don't worry, I've got your back. In this video, we're gonna go through exactly how to set up family sharing and go through all of the management options that you have to control that iPhone or that iPad. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so that you can get notified of future videos that I make, how you can set up parental controls on TVs, on gaming systems, or just learn more about how to manage your entire tech home. So welcome to Family Tech, let's get started. So the one thing about setting up parental controls for an iPhone or an iPad is it is best to do it from an iPhone. So if you are a parent that does not have an iPhone yourself, the best thing would probably be to get yourself an iPhone. Now, whether this is going to replace your main device or if it's just an iPhone that you have in order to control the iOS devices in your home. If you don't wanna change your main device, like I said, you can use just another iOS device in your home and it does not need to have its own cellular service. You can use it on the Wi-Fi and manage. But if you are out and about in at the grocery store or things like that, you won't get those notifications of app requests or time extension requests because you won't have that iPhone with service out and about. So unfortunately, an Android parent trying to manage an iOS device is probably the worst parenting technology situation to be in. So the best bet if you are going to allow your child to have an iOS device is to switch yourself to an iOS device or just change your child to an Android and then you don't need this video. So having said all that, let's go ahead and get started setting up these print controls. So go ahead and grab the iPhone that is your iPhone or the iPhone that you have purchased to manage the iOS devices in your home and open up the settings app. Once you're in the settings app, you're going to tap on your Apple ID and then tap on family sharing. There's a tiny little plus button up at the top right hand corner. Go ahead and tap on that. Now there are two different ways to set up this family sharing. Now, if your child is over the age of 13, you're going to want to create them their own Apple ID on their device first. If the child is under the age of 13, you can create the Apple ID directly from your device right here. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the youngest profile and we'll tap on create the Apple ID. Now, as you can see, it's not going to allow me to choose a date of birth that is 13 or over. Your child has to be under the age of 13 in order to create the Apple ID right here on your iPhone. Now, the reason for this is the COPA restriction. So COPA is, an, is a law called the Children's Online Privacy and Protection Act, which restricts tech companies from having data for any minors that are under the age of 13. Once they are 13 and over, then they're allowed to have their data. So that's kind of why this 13 cutoff is here. So a lot of parents will see this and want to change their child's age or change their birth date. I'm going to highly recommend against doing something like this. You want to make sure your child is the age that they are because otherwise a lot of things can get messed up and in order to change that birthday, maybe after they turn 18 or things like that, you will have to make a phone call to Apple and often they have to just completely start over with a new Apple ID. So it's best to just enter the correct date of birth. You don't lose much in the way of parental controls um, when they do turn 13. It's going to allow you to still control the device exactly the same as you would a child who is under the age of 13. So there's really no point to lie about their age or lie about their birthday. So let's go ahead and enter the correct date of birth for the child who is under the age of 13. Go ahead and enter their name, that date of birth, and we'll go ahead and continue. Now, because it's iOS and their ecosystem is very integrated, 
It's going to allow you to set up this new phone with this new Apple ID almost entirely from your Apple phone. So go ahead and just follow the prompts. We'll get into exactly what these screen time settings can do uh, later in the video. So just make sure you're following the prompts. You can always change any of these settings later um, or you can just do them here right now. If your child's iPhone is close to your iPhone, you'll have this really integrated setup where it's going to prompt you on your device to set up the phone on your child's device. You can go ahead and link them through this um, code that is displayed on the screen. And then it will ask you who this phone is going to belong to and set up some different prompts and things that will have you, you know, set up the face ID on the new phone and um, set up a password for the new iPhone as well. So it's going to sign in to your teens account and then you will be all good to go. So go ahead and hit done and don't transfer anything because this is a brand new account. So there's nothing to transfer and we'll go ahead and continue and you are all set up. Now that you've got the child's device all set up with their Apple ID that is for a child under the age of 13, you can set up all of the different screen time restrictions. Again, we'll get into that in just a minute. Let's go through the process for somebody who is over the age of 13 now. So this process is going to be a little different from the child who is under the age of 13. You're going to start the process on their device first instead of on your device. So go ahead and set up a new Apple ID for this child. Now, if they already have an Apple ID, you can just go ahead and sign into the device with their own Apple ID because we're gonna add them to family sharing after the fact. So just make sure you're signed in with their Apple ID or create a new Apple ID for this teen who is getting their very first phone. Once you sign into the phone with their Apple ID, go back to your phone and open the settings app again. We're going to again tap on the Apple ID and then tap family sharing. We're going to hit that plus button one more time. And this time we're going to select invite. Go ahead and tap on invite and enter the Apple ID either you just created or their current Apple ID. Once you've added that, it's going to send an invitation to the child's device. Go ahead and tap on the invitation on the child's device and accept it. Once it's accepted, they're going to show up here in Family Sharing and let's go through all of the screen time settings that you can create to manage both of these devices. So to manage screen time, you're gonna go back to the Settings app and tap on your Apple ID again and tap on family sharing. Once you're in family sharing, go ahead and tap on the individual user that you are setting up. The first thing we're gonna look at here is screen time. From here, you can tap on turn on downtime and it's going to lock out their device until the next day or until you turn it back on. You can schedule downtime to occur, which just means it's going to limit access to the device. It's still going to allow any apps that you have set as always allowed, uh, but it's going to lock them out of any other apps that they would have access to. You can customize the schedule and set a bedtime and a wake time. And then don't forget to toggle at the bottom block at downtime. This is going to ensure that the device is locked out during that time frame. The next section we have is app limits. So this is going to allow you to set a time limit for individual apps that your children may be using a little too much. So you can set an app limit for TikTok, an app limit for Discord or anything like that, that they are spending a little too much time on, you can go ahead and set that app limit. Or you can set a limit for an entire category. So if you want to limit games or limit entertainment, you can do that right from here. Again, don't forget to toggle the block at the end of limit. Otherwise, it's just gonna tell them that they've reached the end of their time and allow them to continue. The next section we have here is communication limits. 
It's going to allow you to block the ability to contact anyone that is not in their contacts list already or allow them to communicate with everybody. You can even set the ability to communicate with just very specific people during downtime. So say it's late at night and you want them to be able to call you as the parent, you can set very specific contacts in the downtime limitations so that they can only reach out to you during that downtime. And you can also make it so that you can manage their contacts remotely. If you allow them the ability to edit their contacts, you can toggle that here, or you can toggle that off and they won't have the ability to manage that contact list. The next section is communication safety. This is going to scan any images for inappropriate content and let the user know that something is inappropriate. It will allow them to override that, but it's just going to let them know and might send you a notification that something is inappropriate. The next section will allow you to choose any apps that you always want to have available. So there might be a music app that you want to have available or a reading app that you want to have available and you can set those right in here or especially the phone app so they can make a phone call to you if there's an emergency. Lastly, we have this content and privacy restrictions. Now, when you do set this, it's going to affect any of the native apps. So when you set these website restrictions, it's only going to affect Safari. So if you do allow them to install Chrome, these restrictions are not going to carry over to Chrome. So definitely keep that in mind. Anytime you wanna check the activity for your child, you can go ahead and come into here and look at the reports to see what apps they're spending the most time on. You can also get a report of what websites they are visiting. It is just going to have the main domain. It's not going to have specific web URLs. So that should do it for the parental controls on the iOS device. Same thing for the iPad. It's gonna be the exact same process that you did on the iPhone. So go ahead and if it's an iPhone or if it's an iPad, you'll follow these same instructions. Thank you so much for joining me. I would love it if you subscribed, give this video a like and hit that notification bell so you can find out next time I have a video for you. You can find me on social media. I'm at Family Tech on all platforms and we'll see you next time. <laughs>